It's Luke from California. Pronouns are he, him. Uh, talking about the ontological argument. Called before as an atheist and is now a theist. So this is an interesting conversion story. And I'm hoping you're going to tell us why. Luke, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, Forrest. Awesome. So, uh, so you were talking about the uh, the modal of the ontological argument, and you're saying that you are now a theist. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit? Okay, I will elaborate on that part because it is, um, you know, very interesting. So um, when I called, I was an atheist, and uh, I was actually going to call about non-theistic religions, like, you know, the idea of having religion without belief in God. But gradually I um, became something of a deist, because I was looking at, you know, things like laws of logic and, like, order in the universe. And then, you know, like a weird way, I kind of, like, saw myself as a deist, because also I was introduced to the concept that, you know, like, you know, people will say, like, there's a source behind the laws of logic and stuff, and they just call it God. And I was like, well, okay, if they're just going to call it God, then I guess I can say I believe in God. And then eventually I came to find this argument, which I think is, like, one of the best arguments I've heard. And I was just... um going to present it because I think it's a good argument and I want to see your thoughts on it. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll just lay it out. Mm -hmm. So premise one is that, is that it is possible that God exists. And then premise two is that if it is possible that God exists, then God exists in some possible worlds. And then premise three says that if God exists in some possible worlds, then God exists in all possible worlds. Then the fourth premise says that if God exists in all possible worlds, then God exists in the actual world. And the fifth one is that God, if God exists in the actual world, then God exists. Now I could elaborate on like how certain things are defined, if you'd like. Right. I don't think it's it. super necessary. You know? No, I, I think I think yeah. that broke down between one and two. <laughs> that was real. Yeah, that yeah. Went, went poorly. I think fast. you made a great leap there from point one to point two to say that it's possible that God exists. And then repeat your second point. Yeah, part so was, was that was, he exists in was, all possible, or he exists in some possible worlds out there. Well, and then point three was therefore he well, exists in all possible worlds. Is that yeah. right? Yes, yes. And I could yeah. explain why. So it's like that's two massive leaps uh, yeah. uh, from from one to the next. And then by the time you get to the end of it, it's contradictory at, at the, for, to the beginning of it, and it makes no sense anymore. Um, Dave, do you want to start, or should I? Well, I just, yeah, I, I, I'll i jump in because I think you can probably um, handle it better than me as, as far as the whole the whole part of it. But to me, it makes no sense to start out saying it's possible that God exists. Yeah, we can all agree on that. Uh, what we're looking for on this show and anywhere in life is show me some evidence of that. I used to be a believer and now I'm, I'm an atheist because I've come to the conclusion that there's not evidence to show that a God exists. There's no evidence to say that, to show that he's involved in the world around us. So when you leap from it's possible that a God exists to saying that it's possible then that he exists in some world, and then you jump into it's possible he exists in our world, you're just still stating a bunch of it's possibles. And there's mm-hmm. still no sense in that of of any kind of evidence or any kind of of rational logical point to make there you're just saying a bunch of stuff is possible and if you're basing your belief on that then you're just basically saying i mean i could say it's possible that there are spaceships with aliens in them that come into my backyard every night i just haven't seen one yet but one of these days i will and they'll take me for a ride and you, no one can disprove that because, yeah, it's possible, but I'm not going to base any kind of faith or lifestyle choice on some random possibilities like that. It sounds like that's what you've done. Yeah, I would, I would I, go uh, on. Like, little... Very similar. You can, if you, the first problem with this argument is that you can replace the word God with absolutely anything, and it still makes no sense. So, it's like, possible. it's. It's yeah, exactly. It's lots of things are possible. It's possible that my you know lightning will strike at just the right angle that it jumps into my pocket and charges my phone. That is a possible thing that could actually happen. It's not going to happen. It's possible that some, you know I'm going to win the lottery. It's not going to happen. And that's much more likely than you know the phone thing. But like it's still it's a statistic a statistical zero. So to say that something is possible and then to say therefore we can draw these conclusions about it really makes no sense. 
also, when you jump into this whole multiverse theory of, well, there has to be a reality out there with it, this very quickly, when like very, very often when people talk about multiple universes, multiple realities and things like that, it's right there on that line between maybe we're talking about physics and maybe we're in some Deepak Chopra level woo-woo nonsense, right? Where somebody picked up the first page of this textbook and was like, now I know everything. Um, and so, yeah. you know, there, there's the, that old whitest kids you know sketch of there is a reality out there with the exact timeline of American history, but everybody's a cat. It's all run by kittens. That's a reality out there. But do you believe that? Just because we have, you know, maybe infinite universes, maybe with infinite possibilities and maybe blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't really stick when you do it with anything else. If you talk about the Easter Bunny as possible, therefore it is, doesn't work. Um, so I'd like to and hear then finally, the third thing. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm just going to wrap up really quickly. Okay. The third thing, finally, is that the order of your premises there from beginning to end has a, a myriad of issues. Saying that uh, God could possibly exist in some realities okay, why not? We'll make that leap for fun. Therefore, he must, because I'm guessing he has superpowers, and if he exists somewhere, he exists everywhere. That's a big thing you have to verify. Well, and then that. also, when you got to the end, you said, therefore, he does exist in all realities. That screws up the first half, where it says he exists in some of them. And if he exists in some of them, then he must exist in all of them. That makes no sense. So, like, yeah, there's a... Well, a I could clear some stuff out there, people. Um, yeah, respond to our responses, if you would. Go ahead yes. and clear some things up. Yeah, okay. So, I, I see what you guys are saying now. Um, so, in this argument, God is defined, at, defined as, like, a maximally great being, right? So, like, you know, try omni, and that would also mean, if he um, is maximally great, that he has to exist and he's necessary. So, if you take something like 2 plus 2 equals 4, that is something that possibly exists, but also it necessarily exists. In any world that follows the laws of logic, you would have to have 2 plus 2 equals 4. So really, all you and actually all you need really for this argument to work is for the possibility of God, because all the other ones in academia really aren't dis disputed, because they do logically follow. Now, the argument isn't super convincing, and I completely agree with that, and even theists agree, but the argument itself, you know, is really valid. And really, you have to attack the first premise to attack the rest of it. I'm not a logician or philosopher, but, you know, that's like some stuff I've heard. So this, what this reminds me a lot of is like, there was the whole Tom Aquinas, I think it was, I think it was the teleological argument that he did, which was, I can think of perfection. I have a concept of what perfection is. And in order for me to understand perfection, there must be something that is actually legitimately perfect. And the only thing that could be perfect is God. And he was basically referring to this, like this Plato's rule of the, the idea of forms, right? The, the perfect form of a chair and the perfect existence of a tree and all these things for which everything in reality is just a mere mm -hmm. reflection. And it's sort of this weird bridge to that. And honestly, no, just just know that just because something is possible doesn't mean that it, it is it is a thing and if you extend that to say well no it's special in this case because we're talking about something that has to be super powerful and and the tri omni as you said which that in itself is a logical contradiction there to have something that is omni all these things but whatever um if something well, if is going to exist and it like has to be this maybe. and therefore if it's possible it must be you're you're making several massive leaps of logic and faith to be able to connect those dots. You're 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 not applying the same rules as you would to anything else. It is by definition a special pleading fallacy for saying, yes, I know this makes no sense at any other time, but because this thing has superpowers, therefore the rules must be different. It's it's you know, it doesn't really hold up. Well, it's not necessarily that God has like superpowers, so to speak, because in that sense, I use the term colloquially. You know, I'm just using it to downplay all these omnis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. So, like, um, you know, the maximal greatness would mean that, you know, God would have all the great properties, you know, and all that. So, like, but when I say God is necessary, I'm not like doing it to say, like, it's a special instance where it's only God, because, like, cert like I said earlier, you know, certain mathematical equations exist, you know. And certain things also mm -hmm. can't exist, like square circles or a triangle with four sides. So I'm, when I say God is like possible to exist, like I'm not the one who made the argument. It was formulated by Alvin Plantinga, 
And I think I get some of your points, but really like the, the premises, like they do follow logically because like I could put in like, okay, I'll do the argument, but I'll put in like two plus two equals four. So like, you know, if two plus two equals four is possible, like if that's possible, then it's possible in some possible worlds, right? Like two plus two is four in some possible worlds. But if it was sure. two plus two equals four in some possible worlds, which follow the laws of logic, then all possible worlds that follow the laws of logic would also have to have two plus two equals four. And I just want to say right, also you... that this, I just want to say that this argument doesn't prove that God exists as well. It's more like an inference to the best explanation. And I understand if you have objections, well, you, you but have to... yeah. I, I do, but like you have to understand that like when you're talking about this, and, and, and I, I realize this is pedantic and I, I apologize. I, I'll get off it quickly, but like you have to understand when you're talking about, you know, other realities that that have different laws of logic and all these things, like we are making extreme hypothetical statements here. And so to say that you're gonna base your belief in this reality on the potential possible rules of other realities you realize that that's kind of a, it, it's an issue, right? Like that, that's going to lead you down some weird roads. And furthermore, like we said a oh. minute ago, you can't apply this to anything else, no matter what's going on with it. You know, if, if I said exactly every single thing, word for word that you said this call, but I replaced the word God with the tooth fairy, that it must be omnipotent and all these things, because it can be in all these different beds at once to pick up teeth and all these, it has all these amazing, it's, it's outside the space. What, what every single thing, that you've talked about this this way, like it wouldn't make sense to you and it oh, wouldn't hold okay. up and you wouldn't be talking about any of this stuff. See what I mean? Well, well, okay. So when you talk about the tooth fairy, is that like a title for like some all powerful thing or is it like physical? Because one response I've heard to that is pick one. It really doesn't have, matter. Like, is the, the tooth fairy must be all powerful. It's able to get, be in all these different bedrooms around the world, collecting teeth from under people's pillows. And surely it, there's alien teeth that it's collecting as well. And like, it, it doesn't matter. It just, it, if I apply that to well, whatever I want, it doesn't matter what logical leaps I make. It doesn't matter what qualifications I give this thing. It doesn't matter how I describe this thing. It's still the freaking tooth fairy, and we can all agree that's silly, and there's no reason to believe in it, right? Well, the tooth fairy is silly, and I don't believe in it. But also, there is one but... crucial difference, is that which is that God is not a physical being. But the tooth fairy being a physical being couldn't be maximally great, because we know that, like, you know, at one Let's point, like, matter. Either. Like, it, why, say the why, tooth fairy isn't either. You, again, your special pleading, Luke. Why, why does God get to not be physical and the tooth fairy is what if what if forrest says well the, well, tooth, the tooth fairy is is not he's not physical yeah, the, he's not the tooth fairy isn't physical the, well, the he's, tooth fairy he's is omniscient too. the tooth so, fairy is an omniscient being well, that exists point, Luke. everywhere that can remove teeth at will that's it's a magical thing it's not physical does it make sense now i don't think so well i suppose i suppose if you define the tooth fairy as the same way you define God and you call it a tooth fairy, then I guess the argument could work, but you would just be like switching the title, you know, something like that. And that's exactly the point we're making is that the, the argument, argument doesn't, doesn't work in either work direction. On, on it doesn't work at all. If, if you're calling in to tell us that there is a way we can convince you that the tooth fairy is real other than actual evidence, then there's an issue. You understand? Because that's the thing. If you want to convince us okay, of a God, when, all we need is evidence. We don't need a logical, you know, runaround. All we need is evidence. If you give us evidence of it, we're solid. We can we this, can all agree this, on that. This argument that it's possible and therefore must be is not anything close to evidence, Luke. I, any more than it's close to evidence, evidence for an invisible tooth fairy. And so, mm -hmm. it's I, just something that you've decided you want to believe. And I don't know how you've allowed that to take you from being an atheist to a theist. But you have, and it's pretty it's pretty shaky, to be honest with you. Well, it's not the only thing. And also, I just want to comment, um, by evidence, do you mean like emp empirical verification? The same Something. evidence you require for literally anything else. Something, yes. Anything other than it could be. Well, okay. But the thing is, for God, you don't need something to like be empirically like shown for God to exist because what do you, you need? Don't need empiricism. Um, well, you just need like philosophical and like metaphysical arguments like this one. Faith. And really faith. like, yeah, faith. I, I you just need faith. 
That's well, what you're not saying. Faith. Like the thing that faith, faith, well, faith is the substance of things hoped like... for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is mm -hmm. the evidence that Christians have for the belief in a God. There is no other evidence. And you, and when we ask you for it, you keep going around the circle of your premises of it could be. And when we give you that example well, of a tooth fairy could be, you reject that because the tooth fairy is not invisible. Yeah, it kind of is. Nobody's ever seen one. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you've you got the well, same I mean, argument. And... Go ahead. When you look at like planting this argument, like all you need for everything to logically follow is the possibility that God exists. Like logically <laughs> speaking, that is all you need. Okay. And it's all right you need. I need more. It, it may be all exactly, you need, Luke. But I need more. So pick, pick thank you literally for anything I, else. I, I think I think we've worn this one out. So yeah, um, we probably need to move on because I think we're just going to go in circles on this. If that's all you need for your for you to to believe in a god and and be a theist, then good on you. I need more than that because the that's claims good. that this god makes and the things that are happening in the name of this god in this world are not okay. And so yeah. I need more than that for me to sign up for that. Gotcha. If you just if really you're quick okay with we, that, then we, you go with it. Really quick before we wrap this up, Luke, would you believe in literally any other thing using the exact methodology that you gave us in this call? Not. Would any you believe other in thing. the Big Bang? Would you believe in? Would you believe in the you know the, the the life and times of George Washington based on this? Would you believe in evolution based on this? Would you believe in plate tectonics based on this? Anything else? Would you believe well, in I it believe based on, on this logic? Not based on this argument. I believe on those for other reasons. Well, and, and, and exactly, um, exactly. That's precisely. And you're given, what we're you're given God a pass here, and you're, you're I'm making not okay special with rules for something that you would never use for anything else, and that is the problem. And with that, uh, Luke, we're going to move on to the next call. Thanks so much for calling in. Thanks, buddy.